interactive whiteboards. Now they come under all different brand names. So don't worry about the brand names as we go into this module because so many of them are so similar. There's just um, different um, language that goes with them. Um, to give you an example of an inter interactive whiteboard, there are smart boards, Promethean boards, Mimeo boards, Polyvision boards, some com sometimes referred to as the Eno board. And those are just a few of the the interactive whiteboard. So an interactive whiteboard really has no brains. Let's take a look at one. When I say it doesn't have any brains, meaning um, the software is what really makes this thing so powerful and the software sits on the computer that the interactive whiteboard is connected to. A lot of times it's kind of like facial tissue. A lot of type, times people call um, call it Kleenex. Well, a lot of times with an interactive whiteboard, they're automatically referred to as smart. I would, this, it's my opinion, but I think smart has the biggest market share, but it's not the only game in town. I think I've worked on every single type of interactive whiteboard, every model and every style. And it really, what I find, it's the software behind the scenes that makes all the difference. What you're looking at now is called the short throw, and each brand has kind of a different name for it. But the short throw means that the projector is up above the board and it has a short throw um, of projection to the board. The great part about this type of setup is it usually doesn't um, shift. It doesn't have to be recalibrated. Um, you don't usually have to run electric through a ceiling that wasn't designed for that. Um, it really, um, really makes inst installation qu usually quite easy um, compared to if you want a projection unit in the ceiling. A lot of old buildings is just not even feasible. So as you look at this, it's kind of the anatomy of it. The short throw projector is on top. Then you have the board. Usually there's a tray with markers. Now the smart board and all the interactive whiteboard, well not all of them, most of them allow you to use a, a marker. It's not really a marker. It's just a sensor and your finger. If you get to the Promethean board, you don't use your finger, you use strictly the stylus or the pen that comes with it. Most of them have an eraser, kind of that same pick up the chalk eraser and erase it. Um, but most of them, well really, it's good instructional practice, don't write on these with dry erase boards. The new Mimeos actually are coming with um, the dry erase markers and I'm like, oh, at first it's, I don't know, I'm just not there yet, maybe that's it. Um, this is what it looks like when it's projected. Now this one has a little bit of a problem because if you look right across the top, the picture itself is off the board, making that part of the board that you can't touch. So it really has to make sure that you have it, they have the projection image perfectly centered on that board. So again, that, that where the short throw with the projector hanging over it, it almost guarantees that you won't have this problem. But what we also see in this picture is what I call, well, no, what I don't call, the software in the smart notebook it calls the floating toolbar. So that little gray area down on the left is called the floating toolbar. It drives some people crazy and they have to close it. But I like it because it, I can put my favorite tools right there and it's available no matter what application that I'm in. So the software is really, truly incredible. Look at this. I'd love this to be my classroom. Maybe I just love the colors. Unfortunately, in a lot of schools, installation is, is kind of slapped up there and hurried on to the next room. But by thinking through this and putting the electrical in the right place and so on, I'd love to design a building and put these things in. What you're seeing here in this setup, you're seeing, again, the short throw, you're seeing the board, but you're also seeing the speakers. And the speakers make a huge difference. They really um, simplify all the devices that you need connected to your computer to make it work. Now, each one of these, the eraser and the pens that are to the left and the right, have a sensor. And so if something happens and your eraser gets um, misplaced, which would happen all the time in my classroom, you can just put something else in that tray to kind of turn it off. Because once you pick up that eraser, it tells the computer and the software that, hey, the eraser's in use. And if you don't want to use the eraser, there's a problem.
Also, right there in front, there you have two buttons. By pressing both of them at the same time, you can calibrate your board. So meaning that you can go and touch different dots to make sure your board is like in sync. So that's calibrating. On the left, if you just push the left button, that gives you a keyboard right there on the board. I'm not great on the keyboard, but I try. And the right click one um, in the, the button on the right is for the right click features. Now you have, there's really two things that are going on. You have the interactive whiteboard and then you have the software that's run from the computer. Now the one thing, the one caution about interactive whiteboards that we have to talk about, it by putting an interactive whiteboard in a classroom, that doesn't mean instruction is automatically going to be engaging and exciting and wonderful. We have to change the lessons that we're asking students to do. I also would love to see students at the board versus the teacher all day long. I have walked into classrooms and you, I, I just shake my head when it says, do not touch the board, touch the board touch the board. That's what it's designed for. I love the setup of this room, so I had to include it. You got your small group area over to the right. You got a bigger group area uh, there, computers. This would be an ideal classroom setup, but we don't always live in ideal. But one of the other reasons I put it in there is you can now see what I was saying about the projector on the ceiling for the middle room, and then the short throw over in the small group area. So if you have the electrical and you have the power to put that projector up in the ceiling, that's m a million times better than it in a, in a, on a cart where students are tripping over the wires and so on and so forth. But that short throw really kind of answers all of the problems. Now, they also make, um, I believe most of the interactive whiteboard vendors also makes what's called, um, oh, they have all different names for them. Symposium is one of them. That it is like a desktop um, smart board. And you, that's what you're looking at there. The one on the left is the symposium where you can actually go ahead and it, it tap on the, the screen itself and it works as a smart board. Now we have to focus on balance because we can't use just the interactive whiteboard. We have to use all types of instructional strategies. And you can actually overuse your board where it it's get where student engagement, student engagement is increasing, but you use it too much, it actually can decrease. So we got to be a little careful here that it's all about balance. Isn't that a beautiful balance? Now you work with the shorter set. You can actually have your board, some of the boards, the great new features, some of them adjust higher and lower. But if you have one that is permanently mounted, you can use a pointer. To, a shorter person can use a pointer. I was in a school not too long ago that I, I think if I was 6'6", six, six, I don't think I could have reached the top of the board. It was set at such a strange level. What happens a lot in schools is exactly what happened in this classroom, where you can see the board is mounted on top of an existing whiteboard and then you can't really control the height because you've got to put it on on there. I think I just love this because I see students at the board instead of teachers all the time. Now this one looks like there's a bench that's in front of it and I think you could go ahead and stand at it to do some of the work. I've seen this in the UK and a lot of primary classrooms. Now the boards are great, boards are fantastic, but it's the software that really makes a huge difference in designing and making engaging lessons. And the first place to start before you try to go out on your own and start making things from scratch is to visit the exchange or the lesson. Um, and for Promethean, it's the Promethean Planet. And the Eno board has its own. And the Mimeo one, pleasantly surprised, I visited that recently, that all of these are teachers sharing lessons created in the software. So this one just happens to be the smart exchange. You're ready to do a math lesson for tomorrow. You need a little jazzing up. You can come in here and search. And you can download. That's the cool part about this. This is all about collaboration. Let's say you make an apple tree subtraction. Put a lot of work into the apple tree subtraction. Instead of you just saving it right in your hard drive, post it into the lesson exchange and that way other people don't have to start from scratch. You come in and go, oh, 
perfect, just what I needed, apple tree subtraction. You download it and you say, oh, I want to change it a little this way or this way. You can because you have the native files for that, which is really exciting. So you can customize the work that somebody else has already done. Polyvision, I love some of the Polyvision products are just incredible. I do really love their document camera and their um, interactive whiteboard is just it's not real a lot of frills, but it works great. Um, okay, I really love their furniture too, but that's it for another day. Um, so Polyvision, their board is called the Eno. And so um, they also have, again, like the Smart Exchange, like Promethean, they also have resources that other teachers have shared. Now, in the bottom center of your screen, you see a student response system. Very often these are grouped under the clickers. Each of the interactive whiteboard uh, vendors has their own set of clickers and their own software. So usually you, you get the clickers that, that are made by the company that has your board. So there's all different names for them. And some of them aren't tied to interactive whiteboards, but many of them are. Here's what Promethean Planet looks like. I've had uh, the pleasure of doing a lot of work with the Promethean folks and working with their tools, lots of resources. Again, don't start from scratch. Let's see what else is out there. Okay, like this one does, Promethean Planet does the weekly downloads. Oh my gosh, that's, I always start there because I'm like, oh, great, great, Columbus Day coming up. Nouns, I can do that. And then you can go ahead and save them. Also make sure that you um, are keeping your eye open for your colleagues too. So let's say that you don't need to deal with nouns but maybe somebody across the hall could. You can make sure that you go ahead and um, pass on anything great that you find. And don't forget, don't just take, think about uploading things so you can go ahead and contribute to the collection. Mimeo has made some huge changes. If you look on the right, the Mimeo is actually as suction cups and it adheres to an, to an existing whiteboard. Some great pricing, you buy four, get one free. They're much less expensive than the Smart, the Promethean, and as well as the Eno boards. Um, and I, for a long time, I wasn't a fan, but recently I've seen the upgrades that they've done in their software, their Slate, their walking around Slate, and we'll talk about that, and um, some really nice, nice features. So let's take a look. The slate is over. You first you see in the picture on the in the middle of the picture you see the board itself is just like that bar. That's the bar that suctions on the existing whiteboard. Then you see a document camera with an extra light and I think the other part is a zoom. Then you see the wireless slate. This is like having an interactive whiteboard in your hand. You can walk around and you could teach your math lesson, for example, from the back of the room. Maybe some students are on the board. But that wireless slate, when you look down, you don't see anything on the wireless slate. You have to look up at the board. And so that does make it slightly tricky. But for the most part, it is it gets the teacher out moving. It also is great if you have a child that is... Um, uh, difficulty moving around, maybe in a wheelchair, in a cast or something, you can give them the slate and they can interact with the lesson also. Mimeo, just like the Smart Exchange, Mimeo has the Mimeo Connect, which is the interactive community, so you can find your lessons and uh, go ahead and um, share. Again, share. Don't just take. Always share. E-instruction is another one, and this they have the Mobi. So if you hear Mobi, that is e-instruction. And what you're looking at on, on this one, if you look in the middle of your screen, you see the well, a couple of things. The the dual board whiteboard that is a portable feature. The tough part about the portable ones, it sounds like such a great idea that you'll share it, but unfortunately, every time you kick it, you don't mean to kick it that you're teaching in the middle of teaching lesson, you're trying to keep 30 kids occupied, and every time you kick it, you have to recalibrate it. So that's somewhat of a problem. Uh, the other idea is once you start teaching with an interactive whiteboard, it's very, very difficult to not teach with an interactive whiteboard. So the concept is sharing, 
doesn't work very well with this technology. I find it if I work one week with an interactive whiteboard and the next week I don't have one, <laughs> I end up poking at the screen or the wall or whatever I'm projecting, projecting against because I change the way I teach when I have the opportunity to work with an interactive whiteboard. Um, again, right in the middle of the screen, you see a Mobi, which is an interactive whiteboard in your hand. That is what the, the screen looks like. And their software is called Workspace. Again, they have a community. Make sure you contribute if you can. And they also have a set of clickers. So that was just kind of a walkthrough. My biggest caution is don't just think the purchase of the whiteboard is going to change the classroom. There really has to be great professional development really need support with other teachers to you know talk about what you're using and how you're using it and we need lots of follow-up we can't just assume slapping it on the wall is going to make a difference because if you put just a worksheet up an interactive whiteboard now it's just a big worksheet so we can't uh, let um, interactive whiteboards be abused so thanks